So here I go. Uh, I didn't have any rain clothes or I didn't have uh, rubber boots or anything. I was out in the middle of the night with a work train uh, wading around in water up to my knees. And there was Mr. Jinks and Mr. Lloyd, the president. Mr. Jinks was chairman, Mr. Lloyd was the president, wading around out there in the water too. So that was the first time I met him was maybe one o'clock in the morning in a flood. Uh, I'll never forget it. I, I could hardly, you know, <laughs> shake my hand. Uh, so anyway, it, I thought, well, you know, there's a good lesson in leadership. Here we've got a catastrophe and the, the most important guys in the company are down here trying to lead the effort to restore it. Uh, I'll never forget that. And I tried to practice that the rest of my life. I went to bed that night thinking I was going to make a call to the other people and say, I'm coming. And my phone rang about oh, five o'clock in the morning, I guess. And they said, uh, we used to hold the board meetings at the Saucon Valley Country Club there. And they said, uh, can you get dressed and come out to the country club? And I said, sure, probably an hour and I'll be there. So I walked in and there was the full board, uh, just getting daylight, and Drew and... Uh, Drew said, well, Dick, uh, the ward met during the night and uh, made the decision that uh, we're going to bring you to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania as the president of the holding company. And unless you, and I'll use a better term than they used to screw up, it'll be your job to replace Drew. And I just, I broke down. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> because it was a magical change. The one thing I walked away from there with, one nugget of wisdom, holding companies don't work. Right. You know, you need to stick to your knitting, what you do well, yeah. and, and then don't try to do things you don't do well. So that I solidified my game plan when I got to be chairman of the company, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So what, what they really did, they indebted the railroad, that's where they got the money to buy these companies, uh, which weren't producing any profit. So it was a rewarding, rewarding period. I think that was probably the crowning achievement of, of my career. Well, getting rid of all those other companies and making it a pure railroad. You know, we were going through the digestion of merging with the CNNW and the Southern Pacific during this period of time. And we really got indigestion because it was, they weren't going together very well. We, we had trouble getting the labor agreements harmonized and getting the computer systems harmonized and the railroad was struggling. We yeah. probably tried to put things together too fast uh, for one thing. And when we had a, our game plan laid out, we assumed that we could get labor agreements quicker than we did. And also that uh, computer problems wouldn't be as uh, onerous as they were. I said if my office hadn't been on the lower floor, I'd probably jumped out the window many times. There were some terrible jokes going around. One of the ones I saw in an editorial in the paper down in Houston said a guy went out to commit suicide and laid his head down on the track and got up a day later and went home. <laughs> so, I went everywhere, Lake Charles, Louisiana, Houston, Corpus Christi, you name it, uh, and met with the customers and, and said that, you know, we're guilty, we're messed up. 
but be patient and we will fix it. And we did. But you've got to be out in front. You can't run and hide. We just had to shrink the volume. And we did. And we finally got the agreements in place and got the computer systems harmonized. And when we did that and we opened up the directional running, it was just like the sun coming up in the morning. However you'd characterize it, we grew up in modest circumstances. And, uh, uh, but on the other hand, when I think back on it, it was a blessing in some respects because it made me pretty self-reliant and independent and focused on uh, uh, success, you know, monetary success for one thing, So, because I, I didn't want to be poor. And, uh, so I was really motivated to work hard. You'd never get anywhere without a huge amount of luck. That's clear to me. So it all worked out pretty well. Right? You know what? You, you, you hate, I'm not the kind of a person to pat myself on the back, but it's truly the American dream. When I was a kid, a young kid, we didn't have running water in the house, had an outdoor toilet. Uh, <laughs> Pretty modest background, and, yeah. and now we have a nice home here and a nice home in Florida. And I had a nice retirement present that my wife and I bought that uh, we went around the world on. That uh, it's the American dream, really.